Dear friends, welcome to worship on this sixth Sunday of Easter. Today's theme is about Jesus telling his disciples to keep his commandments, and that through this they would receive the Holy Spirit, the advocates. This is all summed up in the ultimate commandment, which is to love one another as he has loved them. And that is the core of our faith as Christians, and it's the spirit in which we gather and serve and live together. We continue in our time of sheltering in, in place, but we never forget this law of love. And uh, it's in that spirit again that we gather. And we hope that this worship service is a comfort to you in this challenging and ongoing time of, uh, that's, that can be difficult for many. If you haven't had a chance to do so already, please visit our website, check out our bulletin, and the Give tab. I'm sad to announce the death of Joan Morin, our sister in Christ. Many of you have heard this, the wife of John Morin. Please keep John and the family in your prayers. There will be information forthcoming about a memorial service for John. We begin our service this morning with the gathering hymn, Send Down the Fire. Hold together all things in heaven and on earth. 
in your great mercy, receive the prayers of all of your children and give to all the world the spirit, your truth, and peace through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. A reading from Acts. Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city, I looked carefully at the objects of your worship. I found among them an altar with the inscription, To an unknown God, what therefore you worship as unknown. This I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times for their existence and the boundaries of the peak places where they would live so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him. Though in need, he is not far from each of us. For in him we live and move and have our beings, as even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone or an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this, he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. The word of God, the word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Good morning. Today we're going to be talking about something that's maybe not so fun to talk about. How many of you have rules at home? Maybe rules about when you eat or what you actually get to eat. How long you can watch TV or maybe play video games. How you should act using kind words, not hitting your brothers or sisters. Do you like rules? I remember when I was little, I didn't like them very much, especially ones at school, because there was a lot. But let's think about things for a minute. We have a lot of rules in our country, one of them being food safety. So let's think about it would, what it would be like if we didn't have those rules. Our food may not be clean. Our restaurants that we eat in may not be clean. And how would that affect us? 
Maybe it wouldn't taste so good. Maybe we could even get sick. We also have a lot of rules for the road, for cars, for bikers, for people walking. And those are really to keep us safe. And then let's think about sports. There's an awful lot of rules for sports. So what would happen if we didn't have those rules? People might cheat or lie. The game may not be fair. And then it just wouldn't be any fun. God gave us some special rules to live by. They're called the Ten Commandments, and he actually gave them to Moses to share with his people. I'm going to briefly list those out just in case you forgot what they might be. So the, for, the, the, for the first one, it's you shall not worship any other gods. Number two, we should not wrongly say the Lord's name. The third one is to remember to keep Sunday or the Sabbath holy. Number four, obey your parents. Number five, you shall not kill. Number six, be faithful to your partner or spouse. Seven, don't steal. Eight, don't gossip or talk badly about others. And nine and 10, sometimes we like to combine as just saying, don't be greedy. Don't want things that are not yours. In the gospel that Pastor Dan just read, we heard at the end, Jesus saying, whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my father. Now those are, some, those are a lot of rules and sometimes it's hard to remember them. So I have a helpful hint for you. If you can remember the next two commandments, It'll kind of sum up all the other 10 commandments and maybe make it easier for you. So the first one is love your God with everything, your heart, your soul, your mind. That pretty much covers the first three. The second one, love your neighbor as yourself. That can pretty much cover the last seven. Maybe make it a little bit easier for you to remember those rules. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, even though rules may not be so fun and hard to remember, thank you for giving them to us. Thank you for showing us your love and your Father's love. In your name we pray. Amen. Dear friends, grace to you and peace from God, our Creator, and from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. What does it mean to keep Jesus' commandments? Is it burdensome? Difficult? Is it something we resent or want to cast off? Well, not if we love him. That is the precursor to Jesus' words here. He promises the Holy Spirit, yes, to those who keep his commandments, but not as some kind of quid pro quo or as an exchange or, or barter. He offers the Holy Spirit, the advocate, the paraclete, to those who love him and for that reason keep his commandments. The Bible, the Jesus we meet in the Bible, did not come to bring a new set of laws. He was not Moses 2.0. It was a new covenant that Jesus was forming with his people, which is another name for the New Testament. It's a new deal, a new agreement between God and God's people. But we have to be a little careful because it makes it sound like the former covenant, the Old Covenant or Old Testament is no longer relevant, as though we could cast it aside and forget about it, ignore it, and along with the people that were involved in it, but we cannot do that. Jesus, after all, was a Jew. And the Jewish people have a special relationship with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to this day. Moreover, every attempt in Christian history to do away with the Old Testament has failed. There have been a few of them. Why? Because the seeds of the New Covenant are contained in the Old. That's why some prefer to talk about the Old Testament as the First Testament. And the New Testament is the Second Testament. 
Those who understand Hebrew scripture also understand that there's a difference between the law and legalism. The law, the Torah of God, is a delight as we read in Psalm 1. Following God's law, keeping Jesus' commandments is not burdensome if it's done out of a sense, if it's not, of not just out of a sense of obligation. Think of doing a task for someone you love and care about. You do it gladly. You're happy to work hard for someone that you love if you think it will make them happy. It's not a burden. It's a joy. I see so many people doing acts of kindness and love at this difficult time while people are sheltering in place, while some of our own church members are sick, none with COVID-19, at least not that I'm aware of, or in some cases have died and have gone home to the Father's house as our beloved Joan Morin. Some are delivering baked goods to those who are battling cancer. Others are sewing masks so that nurses and others who are vulnerable or in need are protected. Some of you have volunteered to bring groceries to our seniors, help with food delivery or other errands to do noble and important work. As the economy has suffered from this slowdown, there are many people whose jobs are threatened and whose way of life will have to change dramatically. We're suffering in ways we couldn't possibly have imagined. Please do not suffer in silence. Reach out to me, to others in the church community. We're here for you. We don't have all the answers and we can't figure it all out necessarily, but we pledge as a church body to walk alongside you. And we have to be there for those who are hurting. How good it is to be the body of Christ and help a fellow member. When Jesus promises the advocates to his followers, it has something to do with these acts of love. Keeping his commandments ultimately means fulfilling the law of love, the call to serve neighbor and care for one another as Christ has cared for us. And when you think about it, that's what Paul went to spread to Athens in this marvelous story from the book of Acts to the rest of the world on his missionary journeys. The story is a powerful example of very uh, uh, deft evangelism, of sharing good news on someone else's turf, being able to speak their language, know their culture enough to make his message resonate. Paul has seen an altar to an unknown God, a sort of placeholder in uh, Greek culture for some deity that they didn't understand, a supernatural being beyond their comprehension. Paul sees this as an opportunity to share his message about Jesus. In a sense, he's filling a gap. What they don't know, he will reveal to them. But the poetry he chooses points to a deeper truth, a reality embodied both in the Greek philosophical tradition and in the faith he has come to share, that the creation we are all a part of. God is the one in whom we live and move and have our being. What a marvelous phrase. God's grace is an environment. God is to us what the ocean is to a sea creature. And although there are many different kinds of sea creatures, from mollusks to porpoises to salmon, from grand to small, from whales to plankton, all of them share that environment in common. Paul has come to render judgment on the human religious error of creating false idols to bow down and worship the first commandment, to be sure, when in fact, all of us are creatures of the creator. It is God who acts. We act, biblically speaking, at best, prepositionally. In God, with God, near God, through God, under God, in spite of God, perhaps. That is the great truth to which Paul wants to point his audience. This truth has become manifest in the story of Jesus, who named the false gods of empire and religious pride, and whose death on the cross has laid bare the human system of sin and violence. Yet his resurrection was God's yes to his radical way of humility, and it offers another path out of that world of brokenness. But it only works if we refuse to rely on our own earthly wisdom, if we give up the false pretense that we know what's best for ourselves. 
Perhaps we could learn from the Greeks and set up our own altar to an unknown God. For as much as the God of Jesus Christ has been revealed to us, he still remains somehow fundamentally mysterious. So this is the God Paul came to reveal to the Athenians and the theological truth that stands behind that God and his mighty acts. But the substance of that claim and that message ultimately is the core of who Christ is and what he's about, and that is love. It's unconditional love that pours itself out for the sake of the other. Those who keep my commandments and who love me as I have loved them will receive the advocate, the Holy Spirit, a helper in times of need. Elsewhere, Jesus says, remain in my love and I will remain in you. Whatever the theological truth behind Paul's message, and make no mistake, Paul was definitely concerned about that truth. The product of the message is a community that loves one another. And because of their love for one another, they can keep Christ's commandments as an easy yoke. Amen. So this song it might be new to some of you, but I encourage you to really sing out, especially on the chorus, uh, just as children of God. It's our chance to cry out to him, letting God know that we need him in every hour, in every situation, and as we struggle to keep his commandments, that we have a God who never abandons us, and that's what this song is all about. Here we go. One, two, three, and...
uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection. We join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Abiding God, you have revealed yourself to us in the form of your Son, Jesus Christ. Embolden your church as your followers to reveal your love to everyone in our speaking and in our living. Lord, in your mercy, you are our prayer. You are the creator of heaven and earth. Teach us to revitalize the health of oceans, rivers, lakes, streams, springs, glaciers, and other bodies of water that give life to your creatures, especially to the free. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You call all people of the world your children. Judge the nations justly. Be a beacon of hope to the oppressed. And speak truth to power through us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You come near to us when we are lost, and you hear our distress. We pray for those who suffer in any way, especially those suffering with the coronavirus, and those whose livelihood is newly threatened. We also remember the children and parents who are separated at our southern border. Help us to be your compassionate hands. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Your commands are good and merciful. Give us courage to take hold of our baptismal promises, to work for justice, advocate for the voiceless, and free the oppressed and imprisoned in body, mind, or spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Lord God, we lift up those in our congregation and beyond who have special needs. We pray especially for Kara Kotzstein battling cancer, for Pat Wheeler also battling cancer, for Linda Katina and Gary Tooley with ongoing health concerns. We pray for John Moore, who's been diagnosed with cancer, for Bill and Kathy Green, for Allison and family, for Cheryl Hermes, also battling cancer. We continue to pray with joy and lift up Michelle Doolittle and Mike Wilmer, the birth of their baby, Rosemary Joy, Joy Wilmer. And for those who are suffering in special way from COVID-19 and those who help them, in many and various ways, we hold them in our heart for this special moment of silence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who mourn, especially the family and friends of Deanna Jones and the family and friends of our sister in Christ, who have mourned. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for Claire Janitos celebrating a birthday in the coming week and for Phyllis and Tom Fargo celebrating an anniversary in the coming week. Bless and keep them, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. You remain with us always, O God, and your kingdom has no end. We remember the saints who have gone before us. Unite us forever in your final victory over death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join us in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Father in heaven. heaven. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, and the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Hi, special announcement about a congregation meeting coming up on May 24th. It's a Zoom meeting. It'll be at 10.15 a.m. It's an electing meeting. We will be electing a slate of three candidates to our congregation council. Um, you'll receive information. If you, you, should, you should have gotten information by email already. Um, if you haven't gotten a postcard, you will, uh, with more information about how to log on and participate. This is for congregation members um, to be a part of this electing process. Um, if you have questions, feel free to email uh, me or the office, office at lcidavis.org. Um, we hope you can participate. We now continue with a time of offering music with special music from Mia Hartley. Enjoy.
Dear friends, live your lives in Christ, rooted and built up in him, and abound in thanksgiving, and the blessing of the Holy be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, sharing Christ's light daily. Thanks be to God, and we will.